blood-stained Ritual of the Night succeeds as both a lovingly crafted homage to classic Metroidvania titles, as well as a satisfying experience in its own right. The narrative in Bloodstained is as most would expect. Players will control Miriam, a female protagonist traveling throughout various gothic-inspired locations, slaying demon hordes and facing a friend now turned foe. While I was mostly uninterested in Bloodstained story elements, it doesn't seem intent on weaving an intricately layered story. It instead focuses on delivering precise platforming action born from its classic inspirations, and thankfully it delivers in that respect. The core gameplay loop of exploration and combat felt satisfying with a great variety of locations and enemies scattered throughout the surprisingly lengthy campaign. While I was definitely entertained by the gameplay itself, I was genuinely taken back by the sheer amount of customization that the game offers in both its weapons and abilities. Bloodstained implements a seemingly randomized system in which enemies can drop an ability upon death that will give the player a new power in which players can equip to different button layouts. The constant influx of new abilities and weapons throughout constantly kept me engaged in finding new ways to dispatch the various demons. The game opened itself up greatly and let me tailor the gameplay experience to suit my playstyle. It was a welcome addition that added another layer to an already solidly crafted experience. Difficulty is also something that is an important element. Bloodstained felt difficult enough in some of its more intense boss encounters to offer up an ample amount of challenge without ever overbearing me with too much difficulty. I felt like I always had the right tools to take on an area of hard enemies. Of course, a Metroidvania like Bloodstained is only as good as its enemies and environments. The locations in which Miriam will traverse are interweaving and intricate for the most part. And while there was some off areas, such as a painfully dull underwater area, and some other more uninspired locations, the typical castle interiors, war-torn towers, and later levels were a treat. Bloodstained features a ridiculous amount of enemies. They vary from the typical werewolves, knights, and hounds, to some zany enemies, such as giant dog heads, giant cats, and evil witches shredding on guitars. Visually speaking, I wasn't too impressed overall. It has its own style and is, of course, taking its inspirations from classics, but I felt less drawn to the aesthetic. I would have preferred a more distinct art style of more modern Metroidvanias that exude more atmosphere over the generic tones of Bloodstained. Unfortunately, I did run into various performance issues throughout my playthrough. I played Bloodstained on a base PlayStation 4, which did suffer some jarring frame drops in odd moments and even nearly froze a number of times. They never interfered too much, but were bizarre for a game that doesn't seem to be pushing the console too much. Bloodstained may not be perfect, it doesn't feel like a revolution or evolution of the Metroidvania genre, but it still manages to weave its old-school inspirations into a great overall package that should please both the nostalgic fans and newcomers alike.